address here? The chem labs that you've got? Um, the chem labs currently, uh, we have a um, engineering contract. Uh, we did a RFP for a lease lease back modular building component. Uh, district selected one contractor. We entered a uh, engineering contract with them. They're working with the district architects to finalize the drawings, um, submit those to the state. Once we have approved drawings, then we are anticipating going to a lease lease back for the installation of the chem lab. So until we actually have an approved contract, I think you need an actual timeline, but we're currently anticipating the chem lab starting sometime um, in August and completing by December of this year. Lease lease back meaning you're taking a current facility, doing a lease lease back and using the cash to it's, fund, it's fund it for sure? It's pretty, it's a way around the bidding. A lease lease back is you, you enter your two leases, a site lease and a facility. You know what they, they're. I'm okay. a leasing expert, okay. so that's. So <laughs> leases, that's why I'm asking. You know, lease the facility, um, and then we lease back the construction almost like on a progress payment basis. And then at the, at the end of the final lease payment, the title comes back to the district. Okay. But in doing this, you do not have to do any competitive solicitation. You can literally meet with a contractor, uh, get the contractor you want, get the value you want, program with the contractor, sign with the contractor, um, and they are becoming increasingly popular with the school district. Those of us who have had experience with poor contractors and change orders and those sort of things and long term contractors are using it more and more. A lot of our surrounding districts use them exclusively. Why, I'm having a hard time understanding why that, why avoiding a competitive bid process. Yeah. Because a competitive bid gives you the lowest responsible bidder, right. not necessarily the best contractor. We've had a, a lot of experiences, and I won't mention names, with the lowest responsible bidder. It turns out to be a terrible contractor. Yeah, you know, but I don't understand why the lease lease back get you a, you're still going to, I mean, the total cost is still going to be. Well, we get to negotiate the price. It's a negotiated maximum price. Negotiate price. So I, get to, I get to, okay. here's my okay. estimate. Yeah. Here's my estimate. I know what it's going to cost after I engineer it. I work with the contractor. I do the value engineering. I do it myself. And I don't sign on the dotted line until I know I've got the best deal. Huh. It's fully negotiated. And, and there's one more advantage because usually the contractor is brought on board before the construction documents are completed, the, the sooner the better. Yeah. Yeah. So the contractor gives input and controls in, in a way the documents are if it's familiar, looks for constructability. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when the contractor takes over the documents, they're really in a very good shape. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and there's no misunderstanding of what he's supposed to do. do. What is happening cheaper. right now is Tim is working with me as an architect right now, and we're going through that process, that whole okay. constructability piece. It cannot be brought to the board. The site lease of the facility lease can't even be brought to the board for execution until we have DSA approval. So all that legwork, you know, you're, you're, you're collaborating with that same right. team going forward, and, and they own it. You get a guaranteed maximum price, so you, you control your budget. Mm -hmm. successful. It's at two sites, though, Mark. I don't want you to think that all the high schools are getting this. It's Diablo. <coughs>
our, our goal is equity based on, uh, on project, on, on task. It's not about the money per site. It's just that every child gets the same facility. The same does, does this come into play? Is there, a, is there an agreement with Clayton Valley, the charter at this point, on, on the are, facility? There are some agreements probably under Prop 39, right? So, so there are some agreements there, and, there, and there's a requirement to, to treat the students in the charter the same as we treat all other students in, in the district. There's also, and uh, there's say, parts of facilities. we have an agreement also with the voters that approve the bond measure to move forward with this project. So, That's not going away just because the school was a charter. Well, so I, hmm. they still get their fair share of whatever needs. The, the facility still belongs to the district. Right. Right. Exactly. That's still district property. No, I, I meant so, then does it factor in to, because you have to lease the facility or something to the right. charter school. So I'm just saying, right. yeah, that's is that taken into account when, when you consider what you're leasing it to the charter and as to the improvements that are going into it? Oh, so in terms of... Yeah. How much the lease is? Yeah, I think, certainly hope so. Yeah, that's that's all. That's all I. Uh, that's all we I do. Ask. The more the lease goes up, right? Is it first? Wasn't it four hundred fifty thousand? It's, it's not the quality of the system you're providing. It's the quantity. That's just me. 